So, just first off, before we get into the video, I got a comment the other day on one of my videos saying, do I only own this hoodie? No. The reason I, you see most of my videos at the start is because at the start of the week, I like to get the intros and outros out the way. It, it helps me kind of develop this a little bit easier. Like I said, I'm running this YouTube channel on my own. I don't have an editing team or anything. It's all me. So the way I like to do it is every time I get products in, at the start of the week, I will um, do my intros. Uh, then throughout the week, I'll actually do the review. And then at the end of it, I'll do my outros of how I actually felt for each of the products. So that's pretty much why I do this. So let's cut that out of the way and get next. So what we're looking at today is something incredible. Now I have seen streamers on Twitch, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, you name it, going crazy over this webcam. Now, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but the OBSBot or OBS bot, I'm not sure, I think it's OBSBot, is one of the most incredible webcams I've physically seen. So I've been looking at getting one of these for months, and I mean months. I keep humming and hawing whether to buy one, whether not, uh, which one to go for, the 2K, the 4K version. I, it was a struggle for me. Well, I got an incredible email the other day from the company asking me to review one, and not just the 2K version, but actually reviewing the 4K version. So that is what we are looking at today. This is the tiny 4K camera. So guys, this is the moment I've been waiting for for quite a long time. Now, like I said, I've been looking for one of these for several months now, determine whether to buy one or not, where to get one from, or all the little things like ifs, ands, what and why, and all that rubbish. But I was so happy when they actually managed to email me and actually said would I be, uh, would I be happy to actually review one. So obviously this is the Obspot Tiny 4K, and I've been really looking forward to testing one of these out, so I'm not going to waste any more time. We're going to get this unboxed and see what we're working with. That looks incredible. So it's in like a little a little safety case. That's really cool. So if you wanted to take this away with you, obviously obviously you can do, but All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that for a second. We're gonna have a look at the destructions. So let's have a look at this open, see what we've got. Uh, it's pretty much just gonna be a manual, I'm assuming. So I've got a little bit about uh, different gesture descriptions. Um, this is the warranty card as well as the user manual. So this is going to tell you everything you need to know about the operation of this camera, how it all works. So I have to admit, already I'm, I am very, very happy of how professional this actually is. Uh, so we're going to get that closed up and then look at the main piece. But I have to admit, that is a really cool little bag. It's got a handle and everything. Solid hardback bag as well. So if you do end up taking this away with you, you're not going to have to worry about this getting damaged or anything. So let's get this opened. And there we have it. There is the 4K Beauty. And I am so, so happy this has been sent over. So I'm going to get all this out and then we're going to go from there. So just first of all, look at this. So obviously this is where the hard box, where the camera actually sits. But the outlines are solid. They are molded to the actual camera. So you know fine well, if you're going to take this away with you, it's going to be safe. You're not going to have to worry. So first of all, we do have USB to a DC 5 volt connector going on here. So this is going to be your power supply for the rear end of the camera. And then we also do have a USB type C, well, dual USB type C, but they, but they do actually offer you a USB to USB type C converter going on here. So if you don't have the availability for this, uh, if you're going to use this with a laptop like older school PC, you can use this instead and just plug that in like that so you can still use normal USB, which is very nice. I'm glad they have added that in because a lot of people still don't have like motherboards and all that sort of stuff that are adequate with USB Type-C, so it's quite nice to see. So we have a few things going on here. So first of all, I have no idea what this is, but I'm probably going to find out in a second. But... Oh God, no, they haven't. That is ridiculous. Oh my God, this is amazing. So, right, first of all, on a normal webcam, you have like a, a monitor, like a tripod or something, or a stand that sits around your monitor, which would be this guy. So we do have like a little bit of silicon going on there. So that's gonna sit onto your monitor like that with a little base plate. Now I've only just realized this, but it's actually magnetic. So that just sits on like that and you can just move it to your direction and, oh, God, this is incredible. I'm like a little kid in a candy shop. I've never been so excited to actually review a webcam before. So here is the Osbot. So as we can see, the bottom is completely freely moving, as well as the head itself is completely freely moving. And then we do have a little bit of tape, so we're gonna get rid of that. Oh God, 
and I'm sorry, but I know people get excited about phones and laptops and all this sort of stuff, but I just get it, I get attracted for this sort of stuff. So I'm assuming by first of all point of view that we do have a small thread on the bottom, which is going to be for a tripod. So if you don't want to use the magnetic strip going on there, you have other ideas for this, you can pop that there. And we do have a large uh, rubber ring as well. So if that's just going to be fitted to a surface, you'll be okay because it's not going to be, it's not going to be moving around. It's a large surface area of that as well. That's really cool. So at the front here, I'm assuming this little bar here as well is gonna be for the AI tracker. This can be like, so it does move to how you want. You can do certain gestures like zoom and zoom out. We're gonna do this obviously in a test piece in a second anyways, but I believe that is one of them. Right, I'm not gonna waste any more time. We're gonna get, get this connected up the computer and we're gonna transfer it over to um, what this actually looks like from the PC. So let's do that now, swap cameras. So okay, guys, so what's going on? Right, so just to start off with, I've just plugged in the Osbot or the OBS bot, and I've got it connected up to OBS uh, at the moment. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make myself a little bit smaller, just so we can see the control panel on the left-hand side as well. So at the moment, I haven't got it set up to any tracking or anything, so if I move, nothing happens. But on the left-hand the, the left side of the screen, we can see a few things. So... We can actually move this gimbal. So if I move that that way and then click on that. So we can actually move this gimbal manually. So if I'm sat doing about to do a game, I don't want AI on, I can just move that around. So as we can see, that moves around the TV. That is so smooth, like really. So as we can see, we have the computer. I don't know how far it'll go. We have the iPads. Then we have some, some foam. Is this three? That's as far as it's going to go that way. And then we can obviously adjust it. So if we want it to look up or look down, really isn't quite. Sorry about the mess in the room. I'm currently recording. Microphone. And we have a few things going on over here. So we have we have the the older webcam, which is going to be obviously definitely going to be going. Because this is incredible. Now I haven't got much lighting in this room at the moment either, and it's already doing really well. So as we can see. So we have a few things. If we want to lock it, so we can just tap the lock and then that is it. So it's going to stay there now. It's not going to move. So if I do have like AI and all that connected, it's not going to follow me. Oh, maybe it is. Oh, so, so it does. Ah, oh, all right then. So if I stand up. That's really weird. That really is weird. Sit back down. I have to admit that is really cool. That really is cool. I, I I didn't I didn't think I'd set it up. I haven't touched anything yet, so this is already as as stock. So we're back again. Um, I was just getting the update and all that settled in. Um, but I think we're all back now. So there's a few things that we need to go through. So first of all, you can see it on the screen. This is me talking to the Ozbot. Ironically, I'm using it on OBS, hence OBS bot. It just seems to work a bit better. Uh, don't worry about the background, I'm still trying to sort the studio, well, the room and all that out. So we're going to talk about a few things. So, like we said before about the, game, the gimbal, we can use the gimbal uh, manually if we want to, if you want to go to a specific spot that's not my face, um, but it will automatically, it will automatically just come back to my face. Um, I can click reset, gimbal will go back to its original position. If I click on tap lock, it goes back to my face, which is pretty cool. If I wanted to fall asleep, just click on sleep, camera will go down. And it's fell asleep. Camera is now off, but then on the screen, if I click resume, it comes back to my face. Worst comes to worst, you can manually move it down. And it falls to sleep. Like uh click on resume. Or if you're not actually getting set up and like something's just happened, you can grab the camera, manually move it down, and that also sends it to sleep. So there's a few different variations there of how you can send this thing to sleep, which is pretty cool, I have to admit. So what else? So we've got obviously zoom effect here. So if I want to zoom it all the way in, so I think it's four times zoom. Damn. And it still follows me as well. Hey, that's pretty cool. But there is one feature. So it's got gesture features. Apparently you can add some. Uh, there is a tutorial. Um, that I'll try and put it in the links in the description. So if I do this, do this. It zoomed. It zoomed. I think you can change it. We'll... And then it zooms back out. That's pretty cool. Right, so we're going to go to the settings. Uh, there should be settings bar somewhere. Yep, yeah, there it is. 
So we're going to have a look at this. So we've got software version, firmware, device auto sleep. So if it's not in use for more than two minutes, it'll automatically go to sleep. We've got gesture control locked target and gesture control zoom. So I believe that's the whole... Don't zoom in again. Uh, gesture control zoom factors. Ah, factors. So we can change this. So if we want it to zoom in to, I don't know, say 1.99, closest I'm going to get. So if I do... That's pretty responsive. It's really cool. Now if I do that again, and then could go back out. Ah, there we go. Wow. No, no, stop zooming. <laughs> stop zooming. Go back out. Ah, I just need to do it once. I, I don't need to keep it there. Right, so you just need to do that once. That's fine. So we've got tracking mode. We've got three different modes here. So we've got headroom mode. I'm assuming this is going to be for someone who's relatively quite tall or if you're some form of streamer and you just want like, I don't know, you're wearing a hat or something and you want this portion uh, for the headroom. You've got standard mode, which is pretty much just uh, facial mode. So it's going to follow me no matter what. But then we also have motion mode. Now motion mode is quite cool because it's relatively quicker. So if I go back to standard mode and then move over this way, it slowly, gradually gets to my face and then same that way. It does it again. So it, it's standard. It's, you know, it's... It's going to be reading that slight amount of movement, like if you sit back, tilt forward. But if we go over to motion mode, now this is more responsive. So as soon as I go across, it does shoot quite quickly. So it's constantly trying to follow me. Stand up. But it is, it is relatively very responsive on motion mode, which is pretty cool, I have to admit. So if you are that kind of streamer where, you know, you're always getting up, you're, you're getting hyped because you've just won in Warzone, you're just constantly moving around and... Or if you're always sat back in your chair, all that sort of stuff. Now, if we go back to headless mode, I'll show you roughly what it does. If I click on, uh, oh, sorry, headroom mode, what it'll do is it'll give me that little bit extra headroom if I need it. Sorry about this whole thing. The light that is on the wall there, no, sorry, there, isn't working at the moment. Uh, I need to fix it. So what else have we got? We've got configure video, so we can set up the actual brightness, contrast, hue. We can change all that. Obviously, mine's standard at the moment. Uh, or if you do change anything, you can click on default. Or we can go to camera control, which is the zoom, focus, exposure, pan, tilt. So we can change pan and tilt from here. Okay, so if you wanna, if you wanna change the pan and tilt from there as well, fair enough. Uh, I'm gonna click that on apply. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to back to lock, so it comes back to my face. There we go. So that will come down. Uh, we've got uh, anti flicker as well. So we've got 50 or 60 hertz for anti flicker. We have HDR. I'm going to turn HDR on, see what that looks like. Ooh, wow. I know it's a little bit dark on the side of my face here, but that, ooh, nice. Turn this down. Turn it down a little bit. Ooh, ooh, where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Uh, good there. I'm going to move that back to motion mode. There we go. So we've got HDR. We've got autofocus as well. So obviously, if I turn this. Oh, but. So you're going to have autofocus on, sorry, or you can manually do it yourself. So. At the moment, it's now focused on my microphone, but if I move my microphone out of the way, if I'm relatively close to the camera, there we go. Well, obviously, I'm going to on auto focus. I'm going to put my microphone back in the view. Uh, we have face focus, face uh, AE. We have screen mode, landscape, or portrait. So, obviously, it, oh, no, I don't want to do that. It depends, obviously, what you're streaming or what you're trying to capture, I guess. So the gimbal's initial um, position, so when you're actually starting your stream, if you want it in a dedicated position so you don't have to mess around with it, you can do that. And you can set that to initial or zero. Pretty cool. Noise reduction. Uh, global hotkeys. What is global hotkeys? Oh. Ah, right. So this, this I like. This I like. So if you are in stream and you don't want to keep going back to this actual setup, you can set all of these so if you want certain things to do so alt i alt l alt o j k q so you can set all these up to do certain things which is really cool i like that i do actually like that so you can turn that on and off depending uh we have remote control so only applies with the osbot tiny remote ah so you can get a remote control for this which is really cool actually definitely going to look into that see if we can grab one of them so we can do it for another view Languages, and then we've also got more. So you've got expert log, uh, upgrade manual, firmware, and factory reset. So all in all, it's really amazing. That is really cool. I have to admit, that is... Oh, where'd it go? There it is. That really is cool. Like, yes, it's a, it's a webcam, but it's also got... You've got your pan and tilt all locked in there. 
That is really cool. I'm pretty happy with this. And ironic, yes, it is. Obviously, we did get the 4K version. There is another one. I think there's a tiny version. I'm not sure if that's 2K, 1080p. I'm not really sure. But I have to admit, this really is incredible. It does say connect one. I'm not sure if that you can connect more, uh, more to it. You've got smart shooting, so tap lock. It's going to follow me about. You have the zoom mode, which we've also went through. I'm not sure if you're going to start like that and then go. Oh, sorry, it's got to it's got to be properly in frame. So on the Aussie bot itself, it's got a green light at the moment. That is very close. I'm not sure if I'm doing this right. Am I doing this? Ah, uh, that's how you do it. Doing it right. I've got my hand tilted like this. So it has got the green light bar at the moment, just telling you that it's working. But as you go to do a gesture, it does turn blue, which is pretty cool. And I'm currently running mine through the USB uh, Type C. Uh, cable that I came with that's going straight from Ozbot straight into my PC because I have a USB type C header uh, You can use the 5 volt uh, DC power supply that came with it as well But obviously uh, for this to work, I think it's going to be a data transfer cable as well So it's got to be copper lined uh, for it to actually work if you're going to use another cable So I have to admit This is incredible If you do have any questions about the Oz, uh, Oz oh, it, OBS bot if you do have any questions about it, drop it down in the comment section below. I'm more than happy to help. But like I said, really, really impressed.